Doing section 4.2, example 2, quotient rule. So quotient rule is a little bit more complicated than the product rule. So our function here for part A is uh, y equals 8x minus 11 over 7x plus 3. Okay, so again, uh, quotient rule is a little bit more complicated. Let me just go ahead and write it up here um, so we have it in the guide for us. So it's v of x, u prime of x, and then minus u of x, v prime of x, and then all of this divided by the denominator function, whatever it happens to be, squared. If we can get a little a squeaky marker here. All right, so notice that in the numerator of the quotient rule, it really matters that you get this order correct here. Um, if it doesn't matter so much in the product rule because that's a, a plus sign there. Um, the way that I kind of I sometimes tell my students to remember this is uh, a little memory aid. The quotient rule really says this, low times the derivative of the, t the high function, so d high minus high times the derivative of the bottom function, that's d low. And then of course this is all divided by the low function squared. So if you want to remember it like this, low d high minus high d low, and then the low squared in the denominator. So uh, maybe with that in mind we can say, let's see for part a here, um, dy dx, so if we remember, if we try to use that little memory aid, low d high, low 7x plus 3, d high, the derivative of the top function, that's 8, uh, minus the top function, that's high, d low, and the derivative of the bottom function, 7. All of this divided by the bottom function squared, so 7x plus 3 squared. And you pretty much always need to... Uh, Go ahead and simplify the quotient rule problems. Uh, let's do the simplification up on the top here. If I distribute the 8 here, I'm going to get 56x um, plus 24. And then if I distribute the 7, I'm going to get uh, 50 minus 56x, distributing the minus and the 7. And then two negatives again become a plus, so I get plus 77. So notice that those two uh, x terms are going to cancel. So when we simplify this, all we're going to have in the numerator then is 77 plus 24. That's, what, 101, I guess. So we'll have 101 over 7x plus 3 squared. So there's our final simplified derivative for that one. Let's do part b. So similar idea. If you want to use that memory aid, it might make things a little bit easier. So our derivative here, or our function here, is minus x squared plus 8x over 4x squared minus 5. OK, um, so we'll just jump right in and use the quotient rule on this one. g prime of x, uh, so low d high, so the low function, 4x squared minus 5. d high, that's the derivative of the top function, it's going to be minus uh, 2x um, plus 8 minus high d low, so this is negative x squared plus 8x. There's the derivative of the bottom function, which is just going to be 8x. All this divided by the bottom function squared, so 4x squared plus or minus 5, whole thing squared. So let's go ahead and um, simplify this one. If we multiply out that top term there, um, we're going to have to FOIL that out. So we'll get, um, is that going to be negative 8x to the third? Um, the outer one's going to give us plus 32x squared. The inner one will give us plus 10x. And then the last one will give us minus 40. And then for here, we just distribute the 8x and the minus as well, so we're going to get plus 8x to the third. And then to the second one, I'll get plus 64x squared, but that minus makes it minus, so I'll have minus 
x squared. And all this, of course, still divided by 4x squared minus 5, whole thing squared. So you see that the quotient rule can make kind of a messy derivative, but we can hopefully simplify a few things. We've got a negative 8x cubed, and we've got a positive 8x cubed here. We've got like terms on the x squared terms here. So minus 64 plus 32, that's minus 32 x squared. And then no other x terms, so plus 10x. And then constant term minus 40. So this is still then going to be divided by 4x squared minus 5 squared. And there's really no point in um, expanding the denominator here. You can just leave it like that. So quotient rule, just be careful. If you want to use the memory aid, go ahead and do that. Um, I think it helps a bit. But really, you kind of just have to be careful, especially with the simplification. So keep that in mind.